Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. So as I told you, I've started to do the Lord of the Rings ASMR and I think I've done almost one paragraph. Today we're going to listen a bit more. Uh, I will try to do at least one page so that it wouldn't take that long because as you know, I do go to work and it's really difficult for me to manage my time and I've got only one day a week because some days some weeks i do work on saturdays uh, right so i'm just going to start reading the rest of the paragraph and if i could i will do one page as well let's see what you think right so we've read to this part where People were saying this was too much of a good thing for Mr. Baggins. It seemed unfair that anyone should possess, apparently. Perpetual youth as well as reputedly inexhaustible wealth. It will have to be paid for, they said. It is unnatural and trouble will come of it. But so far, trouble had not come, and Mr. Baggins was generous with his money. Most people were willing to give him his oddities and his good fortune. He remained on visiting terms with his relatives, except, of course, the Sackville Bagginses, and he had many devoted admirers among the hobbits of poor and unimportant families, but he had no close friends until some of his young cousins began to grow up. The eldest of these, and Bilbo's favourite, was young Frodo Baggins. When Bilbo was 99, he adopted Frodo as his head and brought him to live at Baggins, and the hopes of the Sackville Bagginses were finally dashed. Bilbo and Frodo happened to have the same birthday, September the 22nd. You had better come and live here, Frodo, my lad, said Bilbo one day, and then we can celebrate our birthday parties comfortably together. At that time, Frodo was still in his tweens. As the hobbits called the irresponsible twenties between childhood and coming of age at 33. Twelve more years passed. Each year, the Bagginses had given very lively combined birthday parties at Bagginth. But now it was understood that something quite exceptional was being planned for that autumn. Bilbo was going to be 11 to 1. 1, 1, 1. A rather curious number and a very respectable age for a hobbit. The old took himself had only reached 130, and Frodo was going to be 33. An important number, the date of his coming of age. Tongues began to wag in Hobbiton and Boywater, and rumours of the coming event travelled all over the Shire. The history and character of Mr. Bilbo Baggins became once again the chief topic of conversation and the older folk suddenly found their reminiscences in welcome demand. No one had a more attentive audience than old Ham Gemji, commonly known as the Gaffer. He held forth at the Ivy Bush, a small inn on a bywater road, and he spoke with some authority for he had tended the garden at Bagan for 40 years and had held old Holman in the same job before that. Now that he was himself growing, old and stiff in the joints, the job was mainly carried on by his youngest son, Sam Gamgee. Both father and son were on very friendly terms with Bilbo and Frodo. They lived on the hill, very friendly terms, on the hill itself, in number three, Backshot Road, just below Backend. A very nice, well-spoken, 
gentle hobbit is Mr. Bilbo. As I've always said, the gaffer declared with perfect truth, for Bilbo was very polite to him, calling him master and fast, and consulting him constantly upon the growing of vegetables. In the matter of roots, especially potatoes, the gaffer was recognized as the leading authority by all the neighborhood, including himself. But what about this Frodo that lives with him? asked old Noax of Bywater. Baggins in his name, but he's more than half of a brandy book. They say, it beats me why any Baggins of Hobbiton should go looking for a wife away there in Buckland where folks are so queer and no wonder the queer put in daddy to food if they live on the wrong side of the Brandywine river and right again the old forest that's a dark bad place if half the tales be true you're right dad not that the brand box of bookland live in the old forest but they're a queer breed. Seemingly, they fall about with boats on the big river. And that isn't natural. A small wonder that trouble came of it, I say. But be that as it may, Mr. Frodo is as nice a young hobbit as you could wish to meet. Very much like Mr. Bilbo, and in more than looks, after all, his father was a Baggins. A decent, respectable hobbit was Mr. Drogo Baggins. There was never much to tell of him till he was drowned. Drowned, said several voices. They had heard this and other dark aromas before, of course, but hobbits have a passion for family history and they were ready to hear it again. Right, we finished almost one and a half page today. I hope that on my free times so I'm going to do more for you. If you like this type of reading, if you want me to read it like on the camera, let me know because I can always record my voice and show you actually the pages so that you can actually see what I'm reading. And of course, as I said again about my accent, you know that I do have my own accent. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel as well as follow my Instagram page, which is in the description below. Have a fantastic time. Bye.